Hey guys, what's going on? Abby here. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all about the Concealed Void Lost Sector Guide. I'm going to be running you guys through the 1250 version of this Lost Sector as I feel like the 1280 is a bit rough. This is probably my least favorite Lost Sector out of all of them. But first we're going to take a look at the modifiers here as I show you guys the path to get here. You'll see that we have a plus to arc and aerial damage taken as our destination modifier, which is really really rough in this lost sector. The risk runner is going to help mitigate a lot of that. We also have a solar damage burn, which we're going to be taking advantage of because all of our classes are going to have a solar subclass equipped. Now let's take a look at the enemies that you're going to be encountering in this lost sector. We've got overload and barrier champions. And then for shields, the real doozy, you're going to be encountering every single type of shield that we can in here. But hopefully I'm gonna get you guys through it. We're gonna be starting on Hunter, Bottom Tree, Gunslinger with the Scatter Grenade for a little bit of tracking. We've got Nightwatch Scout Rifle for the Overload. We've got our Risk Runner for the Barrier Champions and the Fallen Guillotine for those Void Shields and also for boss damage. And then we're running Celestial Nighthawk so we get that nice one big golden gun shot. If you don't have it, don't worry. It's not absolutely necessary, but it's gonna help you melt the boss if you do. All right, so going into this Lost Sector, we're gonna encounter some drags and some, some shanks right away. If you need to get that Risk Runner perk, active the arc conductor you can just jump right into the milk if you want to it is going to do a fair amount of damage though so if you're already squishy enough you may not want to risk it get it risk runner <laughs> But here's the first overload champion. We're just going to go at him with the Nightwatch Scout Rifle. The nice thing about this Nightwatch is that it has explosive payload. So even if you're not hitting the overload champion directly, it will sometimes stun them. Just be careful of that corner and the two vandals that are going to be shooting you all the way across. They have downed me many times. So just be careful of that. And then coming around the corner, we're going to get the first heavy shank. So I threw the swarm grenade. You want to make sure you have swarm grenade on for hunter because the other grenades are not really going to track like that you can also use your knife if you have your knife your throwing knife up as hunter to strip the shank shield going into this next room we're going to try and jump over to this side of the room where this arc shielded captain is because it's really difficult this room is so frustrating it can be so frustrating but we're going to try to get over here because I like that area better for fighting the enemies and just clearing out some of the adds. You can't really get over there as well with the other classes, but I feel like Hunter, it's pretty easy to jump over there. A lot of times too, your reactive pulse, if you have a reactive pulse mod on your armor, that's going to pop off at the same time that you jump over there and take damage. So that will strip the captain's shield as well. But luckily for us, we have risk runners, so we don't really have to worry about it. But as you can see with this barrier servitor, this is the only barrier servitor. He's super annoying. He teleports all over the place. He drops down into the milk. He's at weird angles. I hate him so very much, as you can tell. But the risk runner means that you never really have to reload. As long as all these dregs and shanks are shooting at you, you're going to be arc conducted. So it makes that servitor so much easier to deal with. I missed my knife on that shank, so I just went ahead and used my golden gun, which is completely fine. You could use it on the shank or you could use it on the overload as well. But we're going to go ahead and use our sword on the overload. Watch out for those little slow fields that the vandals are going to drop. Now here I was trying to be a little cheeky and speed through a little bit, but because <laughs> but because of the exploder shanks, um, you're going to have to go back anyway. So just clear all those ads. <laughs> Don't try and rush through like I did. And here I was completely lost. Okay. 
But you know what? We're keeping it in. We're keeping it in the video. I just picked my fastest runs for these videos and then I commentate them while I'm watching them. But you're going to get a second group of Exploder Shanks that come out after you cross, after you kill the first group and then you go ahead and cross that gap. So just make sure you're always backtracking so that the Exploder Shanks don't get you. I swear they have a ginormous radius. So just be careful. And then we get the final overload there, which we took out with the sword. And then now we're in the boss room. So the boss room, you're going to take out a first few ads here, and then the boss is going to spawn. So just be ready. If you have your golden gun, great. If not, then make sure to get ready with your sword. And then in the background, you can see that servitor popped out of the door. Now, if you don't take the boss down quick enough, you're going to get a void shielded servitor that comes out and they're actually going to make the boss immune. So you want to just use your guillotine on that servitor if you can. All right, on to our Titan. For the Titan loadout, we're going to be going Sunbreaker Titan bottom tree with the sunspots. Same weapon loadout as before. And then here's the armor loadout with the armor mods. Now, we are using Reactive Pulse. If you guys have watched any of my other videos, you know this is one of my favorite, favorite mods. It's going to do wonders for us to kind of protect us, do a little damage. Speaking of protection, we also have Protective Light, which is another really great mod. If you have it, you can slap it on there and then it may help you when you're charged with light and you take damage. So jumping into the beginning of the Titan Lost Sector, you can see we jumped right into the Milk to get our Risk Runner Arc Conductor active, stunned the Overload, and then went at it. Now you could run the exotic that allows you to shoot through your barrier. That's another good one that you you could run however i like to have the extra grenade and ability charges with the hollow fire heart but really the exotics for titan are pretty open-ended whatever you have and what you're comfortable using go ahead and use that Now we're onto the second room. This room is definitely the hardest room to get through because of this barrier servitor, but this is the exact reason why I run Risk Runner in this lost sector. The shanks will be immune. They're shooting at you. Every, everything's shooting arc damage, not to mention that's a modifier where you're taking more arc damage and more aerial damage, and you can just keep shooting that barrier servitor. You don't have to stop shooting because you don't have to reload your weapon, so it makes it super nice. Now in this run through, we actually ignored that captain. I didn't even go over there, whereas on my hunter playthrough, I did go over there and the captain ended up teleporting to this platform. So just be ready for that. But if you have your risk runner out, you should be good. I also left a drag over on that other platform in my attempts to speed through this and impress everybody that's watching this video. <laughs> Almost died there. Did die there, actually. <laughs> that Vandal up top can be really, really punishing. I normally try to get him with my scout rifle first, but he was being a little hidey and uh, getting behind cover there. So I just went for it and got punished for it, like we often do. So we're back at it again. Watch out for the slowy stuff that they drop. And then we go in with the Risk Runner. These guys do melee arc damage as well. So you can use your Risk Runner there. With the Exploder Shanks, we're going to shoot the first group of them. I always try to get this Vandal as well because those Sniper Vandals are brutal. Jump over here. Get ready for the next set of Exploder Shanks. And then we're going to jump back. Clear those guys out. And then now we just have the Overload. Stun the overload with your scout and then go in with your sword. And now we're going to the final boss room. 
So with the Titan and the Warlock, we don't have as much one-shot potential as we do with the Hunter. We're not running a Golden Gun. So we're going to be letting our sword do most of the work. And you can pop your super as well, which is what I did here. Always make sure to stand in your sunspot because you'll throw hammers faster, even though the boss just booped me out of it. But we are doing more solar damage, so it is nice to just pop your super if you've got it and then finish him off with the sword and then go ahead and get your loot. I feel like a Lament would do really well here too because we do have that solar burn, but you're not really going to be using Lament to get the shanks and the Risk Runner is just so good for that arc damage. All right, on to the Warlock. We're going to be running the same weapon loadout and we're going to actually try out Well of Radiance. Now you could go Dawnblade if you want, but I feel like Well of Radiance could really help. I'm also using Phoenix Protocol. In case you get your well in like the second room and you want to use it while you're clearing ads, you could do that as well. But here we go, starting off just dipping our toe into the Vex Milk to get that Arc Conductor going on our Risk Runner and then clearing out as many ads as we can, trying to bait that overload over. But the good news about about the warlock is that your grenade is really nice for those overload guys to sit in so they're going to be stunned a lot so you're going to have an easier time stunning them on warlock than you did with the other classes where we had to use our scout rifle for the most part make sure you always clear these two vandals on the opposite platform before you take out that shank because they can be pretty deadly I didn't have a grenade handy, so I just went in for the melee, which is pretty risky, but you gotta risk it for the biscuit in these lost sectors. Plus we already have four revives. So don't worry about dying a couple times here and there. Now we're on to the barrier servitor, who is really the most annoying enemy in this entire lost sector because he teleports around, does a little dance, goes under, goes into the milk. I don't know where he goes, but luckily with the risk runner, we can just keep shooting. We don't have to worry about reloading so it's so nice. Keep in mind that Warlock is probably my least played class. I am not comfortable with the jump whatsoever and you can probably tell in my gameplay. <laughs> And now we've got this shank to deal with, so toss a grenade his way, get him out of there. And then we want to focus on this vandal right at the door there before we go to the overload. And then we're going to stun the overload. This overload has a tendency to become unstunned really fast. So make sure you throw a grenade and stun him with your scout just to make sure he's dead. And then going down this hallway, we're going to get a first group of exploder shanks. And then as you jump over, you're going to get a second group. So you're going to want to run back, take those out, and then make sure you take out the vandal in the far back of the hallway. Also this melee dude that I did not kill. And then once we kill that Vandal, it's safe to jump across, stun the Overload, and take him out with our sword. I didn't want to get stuck in that slowy stuff. <laughs> what do they call that? So I just decided to wait for him to become unstunned so I could stun him again. And now we're going into the final boss room with the Warlock since I decided to go with Well of Radiance. We're actually going to clear out the ads with Risk Runner and then pop Well of Radiance right down on where the boss spawns right in the middle here. Throw a grenade and then go in with your sword. If he stomps, you're going to want to do a light attack to get back 
into the middle and that is it all right guys that's gonna do it for the concealed void 1250 lost sector hopefully that guide helps you get through it it is one of my least favorite lost sectors so i feel your pain if you're looking for alternate weapon loadouts check the pin comment below or one of i'm sure many comments of people recommending their loadouts what they use to get through it if you enjoyed the video give it a like and if you haven't already please subscribe we are super close to 30k subs I cannot believe it. And I thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.